ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ so if you remember last week we covered the four stages of spiritual development and what we learned was as guru nanak dev ji was explaining the stages how further and further along the development we see the change within the spiritual seeker so we see a stage of listening then accepting the teachings then actually following them practicing them going into that meditation learning about yourself and the final stage being the loss of identity loss of this individual ego but the question then comes what do you do when you've lost your ego can we live without an ego what is that experience like with our ego we have a reason to wake up in the morning we have ambition we have passion we have a purpose in life because the purpose is ours so we get up and we've got work to do families to feed that's all things that we associate with ourselves what do you do when you've lost your sense of self identity have you lost everything so what do we even mean by losing yourself if we think about various scenarios in life where people say that i lost myself the kind of things that they say the way that they describe it is that you get to a state where you no longer know who you are of course you know your name but there's something that's now missing inside you you've lost something something that now consumes you has swallowed your identity and in life there are a few ways that we see people losing their identity ways in which people lose themselves completely some people lose themselves in the things that they do their work their job they completely forget themselves and they go so deep into their work their responsibilities even seva serving others you can lose yourself in that you don't know why but you continually stay busy so that's one way that people lose their sense of self another way that people lose themselves is in their passions and passions lead on to habits habits lead on to addictions and these can be from the simplest smallest things like shopping you can lose yourself in that passion gambling you can even lose yourself in a book have you ever noticed reading a book so intently so deeply watching a movie where you're so engrossed in the movie that the person watching the movie is now irrelevant all the characters all the scenes the plot that's what consumes you so these are ways that we can lose our identity in temporary pleasures another way that people lose themselves is in depression when they've lost something in life they feel hollow they feel empty inside they have no reason to get out of bed in the morning nothing motivates them nothing drives them sometimes people go into depression without actually losing anything they don't know why but they've just lost this drive for life purpose meaning
So they get this feeling of emptiness. So these are some of the different ways that we can see people just losing themselves. Another way that people lose themselves is when they fall in love. That is the opposite of emptiness. That is when they feel so fulfilled by the thing that they're now in love with. You live for the other person. And whether the other person is near or far, just their very memory keeps you alive, keeps you fulfilled. You now live for that person. So that's another way that people can lose themselves. But all of these ways of losing yourself is unconscious. All of these ways are unconscious ways of losing yourself. There is only one way to consciously lose yourself. And that is known as samadhi. Every other way of losing yourself is a glimpse into samadhi. Sometimes these ways that we've described already are unintentional ways that you lose yourself. Unconscious. But unlike the above examples, Samadhi is a unique type of losing yourself. It is a falling in love. It is a losing of yourself. It is a drowning into something else. But what remains is your awareness. You do it consciously. And you remain conscious throughout the process. In Samadhi, you are not lost. In Samadhi, you have found something. You lose your identity, but you find something in return. So this is the journey of the spiritual path. If we think about it, we spend all of our life looking for some purpose, some meaning, some way to keep ourselves fulfilled. What happens when you find that purpose? What happens when you found the meaning of your life? Where do you go from there? So this is the example that we're going to be looking at. When the guru-facing ones have lost themselves so deeply that where they've ended up by losing their identity, they've gained the whole universe. So your mission in life is no more finding something it's not searching for something anymore. The search is over. We talked about the spiritual seekers who were trying to find the ends of the universe, always searching, always looking for some, something else, something more, never satisfied. This is not that. This is not searching for something anymore. The quest is over. The diver no longer feels the need to explore more of the ocean. For the first time, the diver realizes that there is joy in just being in the ocean. Swimming in the ocean is enough. Enjoying the moment is enough. The diver has realized that the search is futile that the ocean is unlimited. 
So this is the process of Nam. Where Guru describes that we're no longer hungry. We're simply reveling in the enjoyment of our very experience of life. And through Nam, which is that divine praise, the praiser has dived so deeply into the ocean, into that divine ocean, that they lose themselves in that ocean. The river has become one with the ocean. Nadia Deva Ove Samund Najaniya. The rivers have merged back into the ocean and the river is now indistinguishable from the ocean. What is their expression? What is their way of speaking? What is their experience once they've merged? This is the beginning of this body. Guruji says, Ant na sifti kehen na ant. The word ant means to find a limit, the end of something. Ant na sifti, sifti means praise. Kehen na ant. The praises, the ones who are saying, or that which they are saying, has no limit. So if we were to translate this line, we would say, end is not praise, praise is no end. Ant na sifti kehen na ant. Guru Nanak Dev Ji is saying that there is no limit to the praise that can be said. Guru has already explained about the stages. But the people who are listening to the Guru's story are asking a question. Surely everything that could have been said about the oneness has already been written. Remember in Guru Nanak Dev Ji's time, thousands and thousands of spiritual texts have already been written. The Vedas, the Purans, Upanesh, Bhagavad Gita, Ramayana, Mahabharat, Quran, Bible, Torah. Remember Guruji talked about Asankha Granth? There are countless Granths. So, Guru is being challenged here saying, Hasn't everything that can be said about the oneness been said already? So Guru Nanak Dev Ji's response is, as long as there are meditators who are merged, then the praise cannot end. What do we mean by that? Understand that the merger has left the spiritual meditator in such a state that all that he sees is the ocean now. All that he can see is the divine. Everything that he interacts with is an interaction with the divine. The one doing the interaction and that which is being interacted with is a conversation of the divine. Nam now becomes everywhere. Nam is the conversation that is happening. So if everything that is happening is Nam, then everything that is being said and every experience that is being had by that meditator is Sifti, is praise. Everything that is happening in their life becomes meditation, becomes Nam Simran. So even though the individual has lost his individuality, even though he's merged into the ocean, he isn't dead. He is very much alive. What is dead is his ego. Gurbani uses a very specific term for people at this state, and they call it Jivat Mare, one who is alive and dead at the same time. 
Gurbani talks about only the highest saints, spiritual masters, reach this state of Jivat Mare, alive and dead at the same time. They are alive, their body is alive, they haven't gone anywhere. But everything that they associate with themselves has died. So everything that this meditator can see is the divine. And everything is the divine acting out its play. So the sun is no longer the sun. It is the divine as the sun. Food is no longer just sustenance. Trees, plants, birds, animals are no longer individual things. They are just the divine expressed in all of these different forms. That is the experience of the one who's completely died and killed their ego. Everything that they see is the one. So the sun is no longer the sun. It is the oneness acting as heat and light. The earth is no longer earth. It is the oneness acting as creating, a creator of life. The animals and people are no longer individual beings. They are the oneness walking and breathing, alive. So everything that speaks is the voice of the one. This interconnectedness means that you hear the oneness in every conversation, in every noise, in every sound, in everything you see. And everything is speaking Nam. The oneness speaks its own name all the time. Because everything that you see reminds you of that oneness. So Nam is now no longer restricted to Mantar. Mantar is the tool that keeps your awareness. But once that ego has broken, everything is Nam. The sun shining becomes Nam. The birds chirping becomes Nam. The breeze going through and making the leaves and the trees rustle and sway, that becomes a Nam. You can hear it everywhere. And if that is the experience, then that is what Guru Nanak Dev Ji says is Antana Sifti. There is no end to this praise. It keeps going on. It's now no longer talking about description of the one. We're not describing the one. But the experience of hearing the Naam of one continues all the time. Antna Sifti. So that repeating of Naam going on throughout the universe is endless. Antna Sifti Gehenna Ant. There is no end to praise. And everything reminds you of that praise. Everything is praising. The one saying this praise is now no longer meditators. Remember Guru Nanak Dev Ji early talked about all the different types of creation, the ones that were meditating, Asank Jap, Asank Pao, Asank Puja, Asank Taptao. This is talking about people who are trying to meditate. Guruji says those people are meditating. Those are countless. But now there is no limit to the ones who are saying Nam. Nam is just coming out of everywhere. Every sound, every movement, everything is saying Nam. So how can anyone say that there is an end to praise? Praise is just continuously happening. Antana karane den na ant. Doings do not end. Givings do not end. Karane means that which is happening. Then is that which is being given or received. So everything that is happening is the happening of the one. This is that Karta Purk. 
that being that is doing everything, creating everything, doing everything. We struggle to see that. We struggle to see that behind everything that is happening is the oneness that's doing it. We only see things from a very superficial layer. Things that are in our favor, we like them. Things that are taking something away from us, we dislike them. Because we see the individuals doing them, we don't see the one who is behind it all. And the oneness continues to give, but it's giving to itself. There is now no longer this giver and receiver. That duality has been broken. There is no Denwala, the provider and the receiver. And if we look carefully at the universe, this is how it works. The sun is feeding the plants. The plants are feeding the animals. When the plants and the animals die, they're feeding the earth. That creates new plants. Everything is a circle. Everything is a cycle. Life moves in rotations. The same thing is happening on the micro level. Atoms, cells constantly gaining from each other, giving to each other. The same thing is happening on the macro level with our universes, our galaxies, our stars. One star is destroyed, it explodes and gives birth to new stars, new planets, new galaxies. So when we can see that it's the oneness just playing with itself, then we understand that it is giving and receiving to itself. So where is the question of limits? Where is the question of limitating the universe, that oneness? This process continues, it's endless. Antana vekhan sonan na ant. No end in seeing and hearing does not end. Antana vekhan to see, sonan na ant, no end in hearing. All eyes are the eyes of the one. It sees itself from every angle, from every perspective. All ears are the ears of the one hearing itself from every angle from every perspective. Let's think about our own spiritual journey. We spend our whole life trying to find this elusive thing called God. We're told that he's invisible, but that it is everywhere. We're told that it is outside in everything, but that it's inside you as well. We're told that it is near to you, but that it's unreachable. So doesn't it seem that every spiritual text is talking in riddles? And because we have this confusion, we don't know where to look. We don't know where to start. And the skeptics use these riddles to say that God cannot exist because it defies all logic, it makes no sense. 
they'll go as far as saying that religion is simply a control mechanism. Elite groups writing gibberish to simply control the blind masses. They'll say, look, you're praising a God that's inside but outside. You're praising a God that's near but far. Where is your God? And because we don't have a practice, we don't know how to answer that question. But God isn't the contradiction. God isn't the paradox. God isn't the confusion. The way we see the world is the paradox. The way we engage with the world is the illusion. We have eyes, but yet the Guru says that we are blind. We are seeing, but we don't know who is seeing, what is seeing. The delusion is that we think we are seeing. When we watch the world, we think we are watching the world. So how you see the world needs to change. Your way of seeing, finding God isn't now a question of where, but it's a question of how. So how you see the world has to change. Who is watching the world has to change. The very vision that you use to see the world, you create an identity with it. You say, I am watching. I am observing the world. Through the Guru, we come to know that it isn't you that's watching the world. It is the one who is watching the world through your eyes. So this is the change in mindset that the Guru gives us. God is the seeing and that which is being seen. God is that which is making the sound and God is the one that is listening to the sound. How do we do this in the real world? When you're talking to someone, when you're listening to their conversation, through the Guru's training, we come to understand that you are not separate from the one making the sound. If somebody is talking, it is the divine talking, and within you is the divine listening. All that we do is we create a sense of identity with the listening. When we're watching the world, we've created an identity that says, I am watching the world. Observing is happening. There is watching happening. There is listening happening right now. Who is listening is the illusion. Who is watching right now is the illusion. That is the identity that we have created. There is watching happening. There is listening happening. We have simply placed a label upon it something so small as a word like me or I is what creates the barrier. That's what creates the distinction. So how do we break this habit? When you're observing something, know that the one observing is the same as that being observed.
the one watching is the same as what is being looked at. At first, this is going to seem like madness. Your mind is not going to know what to do with this. You'll think you're losing your mind. So when you're watching something, know that watching is happening. There is observing going on. Simply work on the me that we've placed in the way of that watching. There's a really beautiful Shabbat by Guru Arjan Dev Ji that tackles this issue. It's on Ang 736. The fifth Guru, Guru Arjan Dev Ji, starts by saying, Bajigar jese baji pai. The word Bajigar means an actor, someone who makes a play. Bajigar jese baji pai. The player, just as a player, plays an act, a drama. Like an actor puts on a play. Nana roop pek diklai. Nana roop. Many disguises, many costumes, many characters. Pek diklai. He presents, he displays characters of many forms. Characters of many costumes. Sang utar tameo pasara. When the drama is over, when the drama is stopped, the disguises are removed. Tab eko ekankara. Then he is back to being one. Then he is only one and himself. So Guru is using this analogy that there is an actor on stage putting on a show playing all the different characters but when he gets off stage when the drama's over there is only one actor no matter all the different characters that have been played Guruji goes on and says Kavana Rupa Drishtyo Binisayo how many different forms have been displayed how many characters have been presented and taken away how many forms have appeared and disappeared? Kathe gayo o kathe ayo. Where did they come from and where have they gone? Rahao. This is the line to really contemplate, to reflect on. So Guru Arjan Dev Ji is using this analogy that there is a play going on. Now this analogy of the world being a play has been used by philosophers and writers of many different traditions. All around the world, people have suspected that the world is a bit like a drama. Shakespeare says, all the world's a stage and all the men and women are merely players. What do we mean by a stage, a drama? When you go to watch a play, when you sit in a theatre, you know that no matter what you're going to watch, it is unreal. That's what we mean by a play, drama. You know that there is something unreal about it. And we know that all the people standing on stage are actors. They're pretending. So this analogy is very important. Now what do we do? Because we think that this is real, this world is real, we all act our own parts. We all create a character of ourselves, and we play that role. And we're all pretending to be something we're not. In trying to find out who we really are, We know that we have to present something to the world. So we make our best effort to present ourselves. 
whatever we think the world will accept. The world doesn't want to see you lost. The world wants to see you found. So you create that. We create that character. And we go on acting every day. We put on a show to the world. So some of us act like we're really successful. Some of us act like we're really fashionable, really trendy. Some of us act like we're really happy. Some of us act like we're really spiritual. It's a play. It's a character. Whether we are or not internally, only we know. Only we have that ability to know what's really happening. The rest of the world doesn't need to know. So we put on a show. So we're all searching for our true identity. But in the meantime, we just make one up. We just put one out there to the world. Guru Nanak Dev Ji is talking from a position of no identity. No attempt to be the individual to create this character. No pretense. He's removed himself from the, from the play. And he simply just observes the play as it is. So who is really playing? Who is really acting? Guru says that the oneness is the one who is really acting every single character. Everyone in your family, everyone at work, everyone at school, every one of your friends, Guru Nanak Dev Ji says that it is the oneness acting all of those different characters out. Think about it. All the characters, all the sets, all the props, all the lights and sounds and special effects is being controlled by the one. The oneness is the actor, the oneness is the stage, the oneness is the audience. Now just picture it for a moment. Picture a stage where every single person on stage has the same face and every single person in the audience also has that same face. That same one is watching, the same one acting. This is the pinnacle of meditation. This is the purpose of every spiritual path, every religion, every meditation, all yoga is to get you to this one realization. Sabna jiyan ka ek data so mein visar na jai. Everything is being controlled by the one. Meditation, religion, spirituality, yoga is just trying to get you to understand and see the world in this way. Any other benefits of spirituality, meditation and yoga are secondary. Anything else that you get out from those practices are secondary. If you don't change how you are, what you are and how you perceive yourself and the world, all other benefits of meditation and yoga are secondary. So the purpose is to be alive, but without identifying with your aliveness. Just take a moment. Look at your hands. Look at your feet. Look at your body. 
this is him. That God that everyone has made you believe is so far away, this is him. Everyone has made you believe that God is sitting on a throne somewhere far away, controlling the world with one hand, and on the other hand, he's sitting there waiting for you to come, waiting for you to praise him. That is the God that we're all chasing, and you will never find him, because he doesn't exist. No, he is here now. This is him. Your hands are not your hands. Your body is not your body. It is the character that you have got so engrossed in. This is the play that he is acting out. If you want to know where to find God, the only thing that has to change is the way you see your hands, the way you see your body, the way you see the world, and who you believe is the one looking at the world. This is what Guru Nanak Dev Ji means by saying, Antna Vikrna Sunanna Ant. There is no limit to the oneness seeing itself. Antna karne de na ant, antna vikran sona na ant. It does all, it sees all, it hears all. And in that entire process, where is you? Where do you fit into that stage, into that play? And where have you been looking all this time? What have you been searching for? Kabirji says, that which you've been looking for is nearer than your hand is to your own face. As near as you can get your hand to your face, Kabirji says he is nearer than that. Because it is his hand, it is his face. So if you have to see the world, if you have to go looking for God, then you will never find God. You find God when you realize that the one looking was always there. 